cover for boar, rabbits, and game birds. Wildflowers, thyme, lavender, and mushrooms grow, and from the summit on a clear day, the view is of the Basalp on one side and the Mediterranean on the other. It is a 247,000-acre extension of the back garden, a permanent barricade against assault from the rear by unforeseen neighbours. Neighbours, we have found, take on an importance in the country that they don't begin to have in cities. Here, your neighbours are part of your life, and you are part of theirs. We had been introduced to our new neighbours by the couple from whom we bought the house, over a five-hour dinner marked by tremendous goodwill on all sides and an almost total lack of comprehension on our part. The language spoken was French, but it wasn't the French we had heard on cassettes. It was a rich, soupy patois emanating from somewhere at the back of the throat and passing through a scrambling process in the nasal passages before coming out as speech. That by itself wouldn't have been a problem had the words been spoken at normal conversational speed, but they were delivered like bullets from a machine gun, often with an extra vowel tacked on the end for good luck. Fortunately for us, the good humour and niceness of our neighbours were apparent even if what they were saying was a mystery. Henriette was a brown, pretty woman with a permanent smile and a sprinter's enthusiasm for reaching the finishing line of each sentence in record time. Her husband, Faustin, or Faustang, as we thought his name was spelt for many weeks, was large and gentle and relatively slow with his words. He had been born in the valley, he had spent his life in the valley, and he would die in the valley. They had, however, a concern about us, not only as neighbours but as prospective partners, and through the fumes of ma and black tobacco and the even thicker fog of the accent, we eventually got to the bottom of it. Most of the six acres of land we bought with the house was planted with vines, and these had been looked after for years under the traditional system of metaillage. The owner of the land pays the capital cost of the new vine stock and fertiliser, while the farmer does the work of spraying, cropping and pruning. At the end of the season, the farmer takes two-thirds of the profits and the owner one-third. If the property changes hands, the arrangement comes up for review, and there was Faustin's concern. It was well known that many of the properties in the Luberon were brought as résidences secondaires, their good agricultural land turned into elaborately planted gardens. He needn't have worried. We loved the vines, the ordered regularity of them against the sprawl of the mountains, the way they changed from bright green to darker green to yellow and red, as spring and summer turned to autumn, the blue smoke in the